Good morning, Team Alabama. We are going to read Chapter 3 in the Hunger Games. Please join me on your Chromebooks at this time. Chapter 3 in the Hunger Games. Add to your Google Doc and your 50 facts, please, and read along with me. The moment the anthem ends, we are taken into custody. I don't mean we're handcuffed or anything, but a group of peacekeepers marches us through the front doors of the Justice Building. Maybe tributes have tried to escape in the past. I've never seen that happen, though. Once inside, I'm conducted to a room and left alone. It's the richest place that I've ever been in, with thick, deep carpets and a velvet couch and chairs. I know velvet because my mother has a dress with a collar made of the stuff. And when I sit on the couch, I, can help, I can't help running my fingers over the fabric repeatedly. It helps to calm me as I try to prepare for the next hour, the time allotted for the tributes to say goodbye to their loved ones. I cannot afford to get upset, to, ha to leave this room with puffy eyes and a red nose. Crying is not an option. There will be more cameras at the train station. My sister and my mother come first. I reach out to Prim and she climbs on my lap, her arms around my neck head on my shoulder just like she did when she was a toddler. My mother sits beside me and wraps her arms around us. For a few minutes, we say nothing, and then I start telling them all the things they must remember to do, now that I will not be there to do them for them. Prim is not to take any tesserae. They can get by, if they're careful. On selling Prim's goat milk and cheese and the small apothecary business my mother now runs for the people in the seam. Gail will get her the herbs she doesn't grow herself, but she must be very careful to describe, to describe them because he's not as familiar with them as I am. He'll also bring the game. He and I made a pact about this a year or so ago and will probably not ask for compensation, but they should thank him with some kind of trade like milk or medicine. I don't bother suggesting Prim learn to hunt. I tried to teach her a couple of times and it was disastrous. The woods terrified her, and whenever I shot something, she'd get teary and talk about how we might be able to heal it if we got it home soon enough. But she makes out well with her goat, so I concentrate on that. When I am done with instructions about fuel and trading and staying in school, I turn to my mother and grip her arm hard. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? She nods, alarmed by my intensity. She must know what's coming. You can't leave again, I say. My mother's eyes find the floor. I know I won't. I couldn't help what. Well, you have to help it this time. You can't clock out and leave Prim on her own. There's no, there's no me now to keep you both alive. It doesn't matter what happens. Whatever you see on the screen, you have to promise me you'll fight through it. My voice has risen to a shout. In it is all the anger and all the fear that I felt at her abandonment. She pulls my arm from her grasp moved to anger herself now i was ill i couldn't i could have treated myself if i had the medicine that i have now that part about her being ill might be true i've seen her bring people suffering from immobilizing sadness since perhaps it is a sickness but it's not it's one we can't afford then take it and take care of her i say I'll be all right, Katniss, says Prim, clasping my face in her hands, but you have to take care, too. You're so fast and brave, maybe you 